So we're at the National Trust Conservation Studio in Norfolk today, um, just having a look at the Bellerophon Tapestry Panel, which has been um, having conservation for the last month here, ready for uh, its display in the new redeveloped Castle Keep. What we have here is one panel um, out of five. So we have these five tapestry panels, which have been in the collection actually since 1861. So they've been with us for a very long time. Um, and they are a series of panels which tell the story of the myth of Bellerophon. So it's a classical Greek myth. Um, and what we've actually put on display is the, the culmination of this myth where he's actually fighting the Chimera and fighting the Amazons. Um, but the whole story um, tells about how um, this, this young kind of partly divine, so he's uh, the son of Poseidon, um, and he goes to the court of King Proetus and his queen Antea seeking forgiveness um, and he is hosted there for a while but Antea develops a, a kind of a, a fa passion for him um, and because he rejects her advances um, she tells her husband that he must be killed. So he sends Bellerophon off to another king, so King Eobates, with this sealed letter and uh, which says please kill the bearer of this letter but he starts um, hosting um, Bellerophon and he charms everybody and he's there for nine days and then on the ninth day King Eobates asks why he's here and he gives him the letter and reads that he's actually supposed to have killed this young man. Um, so he thinks the best way to kind of get around this because you can't kill a guest is to actually send him off to fight um, an unfightable monster which is the chimera which is a, a mythical creature which has the head of a lion the body of a goat and the uh, back end of a serpent and breathes fire um, Bellerophon goes off and with his uh, winged horse Pegasus um, he manages to actually fight and kill the chimera and so he's sent off on another um, you know unwinnable uh, quest by Eobates to fight the Amazons um, and those are the two scenes that are actually depicted in this in this tapestry panel He's, of course, successful in all of this and ends up marrying the Queen's daughter, um, but that's in the final panel. So this is the one that we've actually decided to conserve to put in the gallery because it shows this kind of, you know, the big culmination of the story in this incredibly lively scene, um, which is split into two halves using a tabernacle to actually separate out. So you have one story at the top with the chimera and then underneath um, you have the Amazons. For the Bellerophon tapestry, it's actually had a treatment in the 1970s, so it's is structurally quite sound still. So what we're doing is we've just put some new woven galloons around the edges which just lift the appearance and we're putting a very tightly woven cotton cambric, it's called a downproof cambric. It seems weird that putting something on the back helps to keep the front clean, but it does because it's so airtight, it stops the tapestry acting like a filter. Once the tapestry is lined, we can, we actually use Velcro to hang the tapestries because it's really good at evenly distributing the weight of the tapestry. Well, this particular tapestry um, was woven in um, the Low Country, so we, we have it down as being Flemish, and we actually think it was woven in Brussels around about 1510 and we can see that from the style of it um, and the way that it is split into these two sort of sections using these architectural features to tell that story. This particular one has actually been in Norwich for a long time and it was in the St Luke's Chapel in Norwich Cathedral and um, before it was acquired by a local antiquarian called John A.D. Repton and on his death he actually left it to the Norwich and, and Norfolk Museum um, and then when they actually went in to set up the, um, the castle which opened in 1894 but they were setting up a little bit earlier these uh, ta tapestry panels are actually on display in a little room called the Tudor room which was actually underneath the old balcony which visitors could peer in through a sort of mullion window and have a look at this room setting and see all five of the tapestry panels together in one space it's going to be in the British Museum Gallery. We're very excited that it's going to be on pride of, uh, of place in that space. This really offers us an opportunity to be able to, to show how the spaces were actually been decorated with textiles and how integral textiles were to, to interiors of the period. So they provided um, lively warmth and, and also colour um, to, to the spaces and would have been a really familiar sight to anybody who was you know, wealthy enough to be able to be in a space with, with tapestries of this um, you know, beauty and, and this this cost as well. These are very costly tapestries to, to actually have woven. Um, so it really conjures that up and we're very fortunate with our collections of textiles that we're able to actually fulfil one function which is to bring things out and put them on display within this medieval gallery. This is very, very late for the period. However, it um, it does again conjure up that, that feeling. So we will only keep things on display for a rotation period. Um, so uh, this one will only be on display for a few years before we hopefully re replace with another one from the series. 
So when the tapestries were brand new, when they were first commissioned, they represented a huge um, investment. They were incredibly valuable. Henry VIII's tapestries, he spent more on his tapestries than he did on his battleships. And they often had um, metal thread with, you know, gold and silver woven into them. Um, a lot of the scenes depicted, especially in earlier tapestries, the 16th and 17th century ones, are biblical scenes or classical scenes. So it would have been very much people, you know, the, the people who commissioned them would be wanting to identify with those historic figures and those mythological figures. And it was a sort of propaganda thing. You know, as well as being decorative, you were giving out quite a strong, you know, political messages. Um, so we're very grateful to the Costume and Textile Association for, for Norwich Museums who have funded um, the conservation to enable us to be able to put this panel um, into the gallery. Um, their money of £10,000, a very generous grant, has paid for us to be able to photograph every single one of the five panels front and back and details um, and also to, to carry out the work here um, at the National Trust Conservation Studio.